morning guys it's Alex and I am here at uh, Walmart and I decided to actually change the oil in the 2018 Mustang now a lot of you guys have been wanting an update and are mad at me because I didn't get to it immediately but you gotta understand I wanted to put some miles on the car before I went ahead and changed the oil I wanted to make sure I had at least two two thousand to 2,500 miles on the car then change the oil so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the oil to a 530 synthetic blend a lot of you guys go, oh, why don't you use M's oil? You know, you guys, you oil experts out there, um, you know, wanted me to use M's oil or whatever. I'm going to use what Power by the Hour recommends. He says, go get yourself, go to Walmart, get yourself a 530 synthetic blend, Motorcraft. Let's put it in there and let's see if it makes any noise. So I got myself two five quart containers because it is said that these guys take 10 quarts. But I also went ahead and got two extra quarts because it is a performance package Mustang and it is rumored that because of the oil cooler in the performance package Mustang it needs an extra couple of quarts or an extra quart and a half so I bought two extra and yes this is a beach chair a towel and an umbrella because in Florida if you go on a date and you don't have any of this you might miss out on some fun so always bring pro tip beach umbrella beach chair uh, beach, uh, beach towel beach umbrella beach chair and uh, you might get lucky, but anyway, <laughs> let's change the oil on this guy. Cut open the filter, see if we see any sprinkles and sparkles in there, and we'll see what the deal is. So a lot of the comments when I released the video about the engine tick are actually pretty interesting. Um, a lot of people say it's junk, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed in Ford, as am I. Um, others are kind of interesting. They say, well, Alex, look, my 89 S10 makes the same tick, so it's not a big issue. Your 89 S10, you're comparing an over, dual overhead cam, 12 to 1 compression motor to an 89 S10. So it's pretty obvious that uh, a lot of the people that follow me are retarded. So I just went, okay, whatever. So after doing a lot of research, um, not on forums or something like that, I actually did a lot of uh, Ford specific research and see if they have any TSBs or anything like that. Ford did sort of kind of elude to an engine ticking, but they call it the typewriter tick it's it's actually kind of funny and the typewriter tick comes usually from bad tolerances maybe wrist pin tolerance uh bearing tolerance on the on the crank journal whatever there was another youtuber that actually went through this he said he heard the typewriter tick which ford calls it he knows how to produce it and he had detailed instructions as to how to constantly produce the uh the noise it made so that when he took it into Ford, he handed the service tech and the advisor notes and say, this right here is how I can duplicate the noise. And the guy seems to be mechanically inclined because he said, I highly recommend boroscoping the, uh, the cylinders to see if there's any scoring. Sure enough, the tech went right at it. And he said, after I removed uh, some of the um, coils for those cylinders that were firing, the noise went away, which made me feel there's, you know, there's issues in, in that piston. And after doing some boroscoping, he saw that the cylinder walls were scored. Now, what could cause that? Well, loose tolerances everywhere, cylinders not being 100% round. I'm not saying 100% round, but they're out of tolerance, okay? So when everything is cold and it's starting to heat up, everything is small. Just like when your dick is in the pool and it's, it's cold, your dick shrinks. And when, <laughs> and when it warms up, you know, it gets to the full uh, potential of three inches, most of you guys. So basically, he says, look, I think there's something out of tolerance and it needs to be looked at. Sure enough, Ford um, took the car in and said, yeah, dude, uh, you have uh, scoring issues on the cylinders. And we're going to go ahead and replace the short block, which I thought was interesting. That they were going to replace the short block as opposed to replacing the whole engine. It's almost when they replaced the shift forks on this car. I was actually amazed, instead of throwing in a transmission, they would rather replace the part. Kind of blows my mind, but whatever. Maybe it's cheaper for everybody in the long run. Who knows? But enough talk. Let's get the oil changed. Let's see if the tick ticking continues after another cold start, and we'll open up the filter, see what that looks like. So before I put it on the lift, uh, it's been sitting out here for four or five hours now. Uh, I'm gonna turn it on, let it do its cold start thing and uh, see if I can hear that tick and duplicate it. Um, drain the oil, check it, see what the deal is, go from there and get the AC on. Let it come down from cold start and take a listen on the pass on the driver's side wheel well, see if I can hear the noise again. Okay, so 
drain plug on these cars. <laughs> I've never, never done it on these cars, but it's literally one turn, counterclockwise, pops right out, no big deal. On the way out, I took a sample. I, you know, grabbed the sample of uh, some of the oil that was coming out of there. So now I'll take the uh, oil filter out, open it up, see what it looks like. I'll see if there's any metal shavings or anything in, in there, but it's got a little, for those of you that don't know, to access the oil filter, seven millimeter, flap, there's your oil filter on S550 Mustangs. I guess Ford never figured out like proper, I don't know, placement of the oil filter because the moment you go in there, it goes in there, it goes back in the K member. It's just, uh, you know, if you've owned Mustangs, it's either been over the sway bar, over a K member, over something, and it just drips all over the place. And you gotta clean, see what I mean? It's dripping dip back here because it, it's just so, fucking stupid that every time we do an oil change it drips all over the place there's no direct like you know access to it they installed new oil filter i know i'm showing you guys changing my oil it's fucking stupid right but you know what the whole point of this video is to open up the old oil filter see what it looks like and if i see metal in it i'm taking it right back to ford so ford calls for 10 quarts so i've put two of these guys in there which are five quarts each and I'm gonna run it for a little bit, then wait, check the oil level, and see if it needs any more, and see if there's any truth to the fact that performance package Mustangs need two additional quarts. Well, she's purring like a kitten, so I can't really say anything. I know there's dubstep, I know there's dubstep playing in the background, but you would have heard it by now. She sounds pretty good. All right, shut it off, check the oil level, see what it's at. By the way, the dipstick location in this car is uh, beyond stupid. Let me see what the oil is. There's 10 quarts in there. Where's the hash mark? I don't know, it looks good to me. What the fuck? I don't fucking know, I can't tell shit. <laughs> uh, it's like the third time I've wiped this thing, I can't tell what the hell it is. It goes past it, below it. Okay, so Jake just happened to have an oil filter cutting tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the transmission repair room where there's a table designed to drain some oil and uh, cut it open, see what it looks like. I'm going to try to set up the camera in such a way that it makes sense, but <coughs> the O-ring can stay. No, don't care about that, so let me back this guy off. Oh, that's so cool. Tighten, spin. Tighten a little more. Wow! <laughs> I need something with a grip. This little glove is not cutting it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, I should do it right under the lip. Yeah, there you go. That makes a lot more sense. Oh yeah. But it's not even. Well, fuck it. Keep doing what I was doing then. I should flip it upside down. Oh, there we go. Got a puncture. Snazzy tool. I think I got it. Ready to make a mess in Jake's place. Sorry, Jake. Oh, here we go. Whoa. <laughs> got the oil path tool, aka it's squeegee. Perfect. All right, this is interesting because I've never never done this. So I'm interested to see if there's any metal at the bottom of this. But let me make sure the oil clears out. Mm. 
I see you guys checking out my guns and my sweet abs. <laughs> okay, so nothing stands out. I don't see anything that it's like an aha. So that's good. I mean, I don't want this thing to be broken. I don't want this thing to be jacked. But there's nothing super obvious going on here. Mm. Yeah, no, there's nothing that stands out like chunks or something that looks like bedazzled bedazzled bullshit but uh, preliminary reports say that the oil filter is okay and that there aren't any any indicators that there's actual metal uh, getting stuck in here at least an inordinate amount but good okay well that's uh, that was it that's kind of gonna end this video because that's kind of all I wanted to do I wanted to tear apart the filter change the oil see how many quarts the car took because there are rumors on the internet of course the internet is wrong 100% of the time that performance package Mustangs take 10 quarts come to find out I'm sorry that performance package Mustangs take 11 quarts come to find out they just take 10 like every other car um, I've checked three or four times I bought two extra quarts just to make sure but I don't see anything that indicates that the car needs two extra quarts so I opened up the oil filter, changed the oil. So this is the update. You guys wanted the update? Well, this is the update. After putting 530 in it, the car's a little quieter, but I'm gonna drive it a little more. That's why I wasn't really in a rush to give you an update because an update takes a while, but I wanted to physically change the oil, see how many quarts it took, check the oil filter, open it up, see what it looks like. It looks good. I don't see any issues. So I'll report back after, you know, a thousand miles or so, let you know if it's still making any noise. But as for now, Everything looks pretty good, so cross my fingers it stays that way. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you later. What a mess.